ونتوكل عليه ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان هارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم جعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين وأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger we ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, you might not have known that we passed Father's Day uh, some time ago. It's one of the least relevant holidays in America. And the concept of a father, of course, was discussed a little bit on that day. And of course, as Muslims, you know, we, we have our uh, our standard response every day is Mother's Day and every day is Father's Day to make us feel a little bit better, inshallah ta'ala. But this idea of a father, and particularly how the word father gets assigned to a prophet, a very specific prophet in Islam. Now our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, إِنَّمَا أَنَا لَكُمْ بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْأَبْ I am to you, بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْأَبْ أو بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْوَالِدِ I am to you like a father. Why? أُعَلِّمُكُمْ I teach you. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, hence the function of a father to teach and to raise an ummah. But when we talk about closeness, our Prophet ﷺ is even closer to us than a father. The Prophet is closer to the believers than their own selves, closer to us than a parent. And his wives, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are our mothers. May Allah be pleased with all of our mothers, Khadija, Aisha, and all of them. Allahumma ameen. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is awla. He's even closer than a father. But there's a very particular prophet where the word ab gets attached to him multiple times in the Quran and in the Sunnah. And that is the Prophet around whom these days surround Ibrahim, alayhi salam, Abina Ibrahim. Our father, Ibrahim, Abraham, also one of the Qira'at, Abraham, peace and blessings be upon him. And he's a unique father to us. Rasulullah in multiple ahadith, if you pick up Bukhari or Muslim and you just read the, uh, the book or the chapter on Al-Anbiya, on the Prophets, and you come through Ibrahim you will notice the Prophet often referred to him as Abina Ibrahim, our father Ibrahim. Not just Abi Ibrahim, my father Ibrahim, but our father Ibrahim alayhi salam. And he is, of course, Abu al-Anbiya, the father of the prophets. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Millata abikum Ibrahim. This is the religion of your father Ibrahim alayhi salam. And subhanAllah, even the du'as that we make in the morning and in the evening, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us to say every morning and every evening, in the morning, أَصْبَحْنَا عَلَىٰ فِطْرَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَعَلَىٰ كَلِمَةِ الْإِخْلَاسِ وَعَلَىٰ دِينِ نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَعَلَىٰ مِلَّةِ أَبِيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ The Prophet ﷺ used to say in the morning, أَصْبَحْنَا in the evening, أَمْسَيْنَا that we have awoke to this day, we have come into this day upon the statement of sincerity, La ilaha illallah. 
upon the religion of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and upon the way of our father Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. And he was a monotheist and he was not amongst the polytheists, affirming who Ibrahim Alayhi Salam actually was, laying claim to him. And just as there is no contradiction between Kalimat al Ikhlas wa Dini Nabina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the statement of La ilaha illallah and the religion of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you say the religion of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the way of our father Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam, you're referring to the same thing. This is ta'zeem. This is a means of Allah extolling Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam. This is not an addition that has actual technical implications. This is meant to connect us to our father Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam. And in one of the also authentic narrations, Asbahna ala fitrat al Islam. We have awoke to the purity of Islam and the statement of sincerity. And on the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad and the way of our father Ibrahim. He is our father in what sense? He is our father in the sense of tawheed, in the sense of monotheism. He is our father in faith. He is our father in the sense, as the ulama mentioned, the prophet who is the father of Bani Israel and Bani Ismail, the children of Israel and the children of Ismail. So all of the prophets and claimants to those prophets become from his children, alayhi salam. And subhanAllah, he is our father in that he is the one who used the term Muslims. And so when we are Muslims, we are children of our father Ibrahim alayhi salam and this is a means of honoring our father Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now I want us to think about what connection we still have to our father Ibrahim alayhi salam and this notion that he still actually cares for what happened after him. One of the beauty of the prophets is that it's not like they finished their job on earth and they ascended to their place in the heavens and then completely cut off the world the way that many of us would, would do. The retirement of the prophets does not mean the retirement from prophetic concern. In fact, you actually see that it still stays in a very beautiful way. And this is true with our father Ibrahim And we take it from our messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he talks about the meeting with Ibrahim When he gets to meet his father Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet وسلم, of course, on the night of Al-Isra Al-Mi'raj rode the Buraq from Mecca to specifically Al-Aqsa, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate it, Allahumma ameen, and then ascended to the heavens. Now, subhanAllah, something very profound there is that most of the scholars say that the Buraq, the animal that the Prophet وسلم, rode, because remember Jibreel told him that no, told the Buraq that no person more honorable than this man Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has ever ascended upon you. Meaning there is an implication that others have rode upon you. And most of the scholars say that Al-Buraq was the animal that Ibrahim Alayhi Salam took Hajar and Ismail from Palestine to Mecca and left them in the trust of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so now you have his greatest son, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ascending the very same animal in the company of Jibreel alayhi salam, coming from Mecca to Palestine, leaving from where, as one of the authentic narrations says, Hijr Ismail, subhanAllah, it's so beautiful. Hijr Ismail, the place next to the Kaaba where Ibrahim alayhi salam had left his son Ismail alayhi salam. And the Prophet salam, rides from that place and then he ascends to the heavens and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentions this meeting with the prophets after leading them in prayer, this individual meeting with some of the prophets. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَفُتِحَ لَنَا فَإِذَا أَنَا بِإِبْرَاهِيمِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the gate was opened to the highest of those heavens when he's meeting the prophets. And he said, and there in front of me was Ibrahim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Musnidan dhahrahu ila al bayt al ma'mur. And he had his back reclined against al bayt al ma'mur, which is the equivalent of the Kaaba. It, it, it literally means the frequently visited house. It's the equivalent of the Kaaba in the heavens where the angels make tawaf. 70,000 angels enter every day, and there is no pandemic that ever prevents them, nothing that ever stops them. Every single day, another batch of 70,000 enter and never return. How many? 
Trillions of angels have made tawaf around that home. And imagine the sight, the Prophet says, I'm looking at my father, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and he has his back reclined to that house. SubhanAllah, another poetic connection that Ibrahim alayhi salam has his back to the Kaaba of the heavens when he meets the one for whom he prayed while building the Kaaba on this earth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And they make eye contact. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, I have never seen a man who looks more like me than Ibrahim alayhi salam. Looks like his father. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam resembles Ibrahim alayhi salam. And by the way, if you read even what comes through some of the earlier scriptures of the description of Ibrahim alayhi salam, it matches the shama'il of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Till now, subhanAllah. Till now you can find those traces of the shama'il, the description of Ibrahim alayhi salam, physically in the description of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, I said to my father, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. I gave him the greeting of peace. And he responded to me, Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah, marhaban bil ibn salih wa nabi salih. And upon you is the peace and mercy of Allah. Welcome to a righteous son and to a righteous prophet. You see, all of the prophets that Rasulullah met between Adam السلام, and Ibrahim السلام, said, marhaban bil akh salih, welcome to a noble brother. Adam and Ibrahim said, welcome to a noble son. Welcome to this noble son and a noble prophet. Now what's going to happen in this meeting between the two? Is Ibrahim السلام, going to ask the Prophet وسلم, how does the Kaaba look right now? How is Mecca coming along? Tell me about how my dua worked out for you all. What happened here and what happened there? Tell me about Iraq and tell me about Palestine and tell me about this and tell me about that. Is he going to ask him about what's happened since he's left this earth? What's happened in the span of thousands of years after me? No. This is so beautiful. Rasulullah says, Laqitu Ibrahima Layla Usriya bi. When I met my father Ibrahim alayhi salam on the night of Al Isra al Mi'raj, he said to me, Ya Muhammad, Akri Ummataka minni salam. O Muhammad, give my salam to your Ummah. Give my salam to your followers. Give my salam to your Ummah. SubhanAllah. And what do we say? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. You know, we send prayers on Muhammad and Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on our Prophet wa ala Nabiina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We send prayers upon them. And Ibrahim says, give my salam to your ummah. Give my salam to your ummah. But not just that. He said, وَأَخْبِرْهُمْ أَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ طَيِّبَةُ تُرْبَ عَذْبَةُ الْمَاءُ وَأَنَّهَا قِيعَانُ He said, and tell them that paradise is beautiful. Jannah is really beautiful. It's a vast plain of pure soil and its water is sweet. And that plain is leveled. The land of Al-Jannah is leveled and its water is sweet. Its soil is so pure. Its soil is so beautiful. And he says, and the way that you, that you, uh, that you plant it, وَأَنَّهَا قِيْعَانٌ وَأَنَّ غِرَاسَهَا سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهُ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Tell your ummah, ya Muhammad, that their father Ibrahim sends salam to them. And tell them about the beauty of Jannah and the purity of its soil. And tell them that the way that you plant trees in Jannah is by repeating, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Tell them if they want to plant trees in this beautiful place that they have not seen, but that you and I have told them about, that's what they have to keep on doing. And SubhanAllah, this is what we do in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Increase in these afkar, increase in these remembrances of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listening to the advice of our father and our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and planting trees in that soil that we only attain by the mercy of our Lord. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Now dear brothers and sisters, in conclusion, our father alayhi salam still cares about us. And there's a beautiful story here of prophetic concern. Adam alayhi salam, when the Prophet saw him, he was still crying over the lost souls to his left 
and still rejoicing over the saved souls to his right. Musa السلام, gave the Prophet nasiha, gave him advice to go back and ask for the reduction of prayer because it would be too difficult for us. And Ibrahim السلام, told the Prophet وسلم, here is how they can elevate themselves in the Jannah. So the Prophets are working together for the benefit of our Ummah. Till now, the concern still remains. Musa alayhi salam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his peace and blessings upon him. If you think five prayers is hard, what would you have done with 50? Musa alayhi salam gave that advice, go back to your Lord and ask for a reduction. It's going to be hard on them. And Ibrahim alayhi salam tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, tell them to keep repeating these athkar. They're going to raise themselves in ways that they just don't know if they keep on reciting these athkar. And subhanAllah, in that, you know, there's a lesson for us that we seek to save and to guide and to serve everyone around us and even everyone that will come after us. The prophets still care about the earth that came after them, the ummah that came after them, and specifically the ummah of the awaited prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when you look at a world that's steeped in greed and indifference, you go back to the prophetic work of guidance and da'wah. You see the way that they still care about it. And subhanAllah, when Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Rabbana liyuqeemu salah, Oh Allah, I'm leaving my family here so they can establish the prayer. Your prayer is not established except with a salah Ibrahimiyyah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. And when we make our dua, your dua is suspended without your salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is our Prophet who still returns the salam, who cried for an ummah that he would not meet in this world and who will be there on the Day of Judgment still interceding for each and every single member of this ummah, including the major sinners of this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the inheritance of the mission of the Prophet sallallahu May Allah allow us to be from Warathatul Anbiya, from the inheritors of the Prophets, who inherit knowledge and pass it down, and inherit the mission of the Prophets in spreading guidance and spreading Al Islam and spreading Tawheed. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join us with our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our father Ibrahim alayhi salam in the highest level of paradise. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawlihada wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa lisa'ir al muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu al ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Allahumma fir al-mu'minina wa al-mu'minat wa al-muslimina wa al-muslimat al-ahyai minhum wa al-amwat innaka sami'un qareebun mujibu d'awat Allahumma khfir lana wa rahamna wa afu anna wa la tu'adhibna Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kuunanna min al-khasirin Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'afu anna Allahumma khfir li walidina rabbir hamhuma kama rabbuna sigara Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zurriyatina kurrata a'yun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama Allahumma ansar ikhwanan wa sada'afina fi masharik al-ardi wa magharibiha Allahumma alayka bil-zalimin Allahumma alayka bil-zalimin Allahumma alayka bil-zalimin Allahumma ahlika al-zalimin bil-zalimin wa akhrijna wa ikhwanna min baynihim salimin Ibad Allah anna Allah ya'muru bil-adli wal-ihsan wa ita'ad al-qurba wa yanha an al-fahshai wal-munkari wal-baghi ya'idhukum la'alakum tadakkaroon fathkuru Allah yathkurukum wa ashkuruhu ala ni'ma yazid lakum wa la dhikru Allah akbar wa Allahu ya'amu ma tasna'oon wa aqim as-salam